Hi, my name's David, and in the last video I showed you how to set up and import your opening balance for contacts, products, and chart of accounts. In this video I'm going to show you how to create, receive the goods, and make payment for your buy transactions, expenses, and debit notes. So let's get started. Let's go click on buy. Inside here you can see order, bill, and archive. So let's click on create new and let's create a new order. Now we're at the create order screen. Inside here we can add a contact, but if this is a new contact, instead of going to the contacts page, I can just click here, new contact. I can type in the name. Put in the email address. Any statutory information or tax requirements. Inside here I can change the accounting information and I can input the address. And then I can save it. And you can see my contact has been created here. You can see our custom field has also been added. So for example, if I want to select Jerong, I can select it here. We can add a product. But I also have the ability to create a new product directly from the screen. I do not have to go back to my product screen in order to create it by clicking Add Product. Inside here we can select Track, Non-Tractor, Bill of Materials. I can give it a name. Input a description. Select the information under Accounting. Update the inventory information. I can also set the reorder level, reorder quantity, preferred vendor, and also have the ability to select multiple UOM. Any opening quantity, opening valuation, select the default warehouse, and I can click Save. And you can see my product's been added. Let me add another line item. For example, milk. And let me add one more product. Now I can see all the information here. Now I can click here and change the quantity. Example 5. I can click on the UOM and I can see my UOM schema here. So for example, maybe I want a box. I'm able to input the discount. So if I put it as a number here, you can see it's a flat rate discount. If I use a percentage symbol, it becomes a percentage discount. I can select the tax, I can click on the three dots, I can select the product's custom fields, I can delete the item. I can go down here and I can click this checkbox for unit price is tax inclusive. So what does this mean? It means that the unit price here already includes tax. So I don't have to worry about it showing up here. So for example, if you already have a product where the unit price already includes tax, you can just easily click this button here and you're all set. We can also attach a file, put in a memo. We can go up here and click on custom field settings. So this is where I can see all my custom fields and I can choose whether it should be visible or not visible by just clicking this box. I can click more and I can click multi-currency options. Inside here I can see my different multi-currencies and I can select which one I want. I can click here and I can change my number range. I can even do manual input or create another custom number format. And finally we can click manage. So this is where you can change the labels of all your different fields. For example, maybe you don't sell products, you sell services. So you can click here and it'll become a service. You can change this to items. So for example, if I click on items, I can change the description to notes or others. For example, info. I can change the quantity label, so I can click others and put in the information here. I can change the label for price, should it be unit price, price or other. And I can just click here as well to change the label for discount. So this is where you can change all your different labels. After that you can click save, and you can see it's all been updated. I'm just going to change it back, and save it again, and you can see it's been updated again. After that, we're going to save and close. Now you can see our order has been generated. 
Next, we can now click on the three dots and we can do several things. We can edit this order. We can receive the goods, email this order, copy it, print it, see the design, do an attachment, says recurring, archive the order, delete the order, or view custom fields. Let's set as recurring. Inside here, I can click set recurring. I can choose the intervals. Is it yearly, monthly, weekly, or custom? If it's custom, I can choose the number of days, weeks, or months this should recur. So for example, maybe I want this to recur every two weeks. I can select the first document date, so maybe the third, and I can select the end date, or I can also choose never ends, and then I can save it. And I set it up for recurring. You can notice that we have this wonderful new icon here. Next, let's click on bill. Inside here it says, your order has not been received. Are you sure you want to convert this order to a bill? And it gives us two choices here. We can either close it. And the two choices they give us is convert partially, convert only. We're going to click convert only. Now let's click on bill. And inside here we can see our bill. Next, let's click on the three dots. And then we can click on receive goods. After that, we can see our products here. We can choose the receive date. We can see our product, description, unit of measurement, requirements, receiving, and the warehouse. So we can also click here. For example, laptop is a serial number product, so let's click here. And inside here, we can assign the serial number. And then we can click Assign. And then we can click Done. For milk, milk is a batch product. We can also click here, Add Batch. And then we can type or select a batch. So for example, maybe we bought this batch in the past and now we just want to add it. We can click here and then we can just add that additional quantity inside or we can add a new batch and click done. Now I can see everything looks good. I can click receive. Now I can see that I received my products. Next, let's go to products and let's go to filter and pending reorder. So I can see this one's pending reorder. I can click on the three dots and inside here, since it's pending reorder, I can create a PO. Select all my products and click add. Now all my products have been added. The reorder level is showing here. Unit price is showing here in the tax amount. So this comes from the product based upon your reorder quantity. Now I can click here, add a contact, and I can select a contact. So I'm going to select, for example, Marie's keyboards this time. Select an outlet. Put in a memo. And I'm just going to go up here and click on more. And I'm going to select multi-currency options this time. And I'm going to select United States dollars and if I want to I can change the currency here. Now I've updated the currency rate. After that I can go down here take a look and see if it all looks correct and then I can click save and close. So now I just created a purchase order from my products page based upon reorder level and reorder quantity. Next let's click on bill and now you'll see we have three different options here. We can convert partially, convert only, and convert and auto-receive. So this means when I convert, I will also receive all my quantity as well at the same time, based upon my default warehouse. This can save time and effort, so especially if you only have one warehouse and you want to receive it at the time you convert it. So I'm going to click convert and auto-receive. Now if I go to bills, I can see it's been fully received and created a bill. Next, let's go to accounting and let's go click on debit note. Inside here, I'll be able to see my debit notes and I can click here, create debit note. Inside here, I can select the contact. For example, I'm going to select David's warehouse, select the document date. I can choose the currency here and I can also select the auto running number. Do I want to manually input it, use our default or create a custom number format? I can also click on more fields and I can see any custom field information here. Let's select wrong and let's save it. Then I can add an account. 
put in the amount, and I can also select the tax type here. Add a memo, add an attached file. I can also set tax exchange rate here if the currencies are different. And then I can click save. And now our debit note is created. Next, let's go back to accounting. Let's click expense and let's click create. Inside here, we can create a direct expense or prepayment. Let's first create a direct expense. Let's select the contact. For example, I want to select David's Warehouses. I want to select Pay From, OCBC Bank. And you can see the currency is based upon the bank. So if we have a bank that has a different currency, then the reporting currency will change. Then we can choose the payment method, reference number, add an account, put in the amount, select any tax type. input a memo, do an attachment, and we can save it. Next, let's click Create, and let's create a prepayment. Now we're at the prepayment creation screen. Let's go add a contact. So I'm going to select Dave's Warehouses. Let's select Pay From. I'm going to select OCBC Bank. I can select the payment date if I want to. I can select the payment method. Input the reference number. And I can click more fields so I can see my custom fields and select it and save. I can go add an account. And I can put in the amount. I can input a memo. Attach a file and then I can save it. So now our prepayment has been created. Now let's apply this to a bill. So let's go to buy and let's click on pay. Inside here, I can deactivate the payment details or activate them. I can select which bank I want to use to make the payment, and I can select the payment type. Put in the reference. I also have the ability to select prepayment and debit note. I can actually deactivate the payment here. So I can deactivate the payment if I just want to apply a prepayment or a debit note to this bill. I can click on it. And I can see the amount here, so maybe I want to apply 20 bucks under debit. Maybe I want to apply $40. And then I can click Next. Now inside here I can see the adjustment details, the apply date, apply amount, and the apply type, prepayment and a debit note. And I can click Pay. And now you can see the status is partial. I can click Pay again. Now we can see the amount has been reduced here. Now if we want to pay the remainder, I can just select the bank here. Select the payment type. For example, maybe bank transfer. Input the reference. And then I can also maybe apply a prepayment or a debit note, for example. So let me just apply a debit note. Click Next. I can see the information here, and I can click Pay and then I can click close. And now if we go to archive, I can see the archive bill here. I can also click in and drill in. And if for whatever reason I need to redo it or remove one of these transactions, I can go here and just click on the trash can icon to remove any of our payments and to remove our GRN. Now let's go back to bill. Let's click on the three dots and let's create a purchase return. Now inside here, I can see all my products from my bill. Now if I want to return some of them for whatever reason, I just can input the quantity here and click return. It says here, return goods have been moved out from your selected warehouse. To record refund, create a debit note or a direct deposit from this contact. So I can either just click here, direct deposit or debit note, or I can do it later. So it's up to you. I'm just gonna click do it later. Next, let's create a payment. So inside here, I can select my bank, but you'll notice nothing's here to select. The reason for this is that I don't have a USD bank. So I have to click cancel, go to my bank, add a bank account, for example. So 
Select the currency, United States Dollars, and let's click Save. And let's skip this. And now let's go back to Buy, click Pay, and now you can see my Bank of America is here. I can select the payment, check, bank, or card. And if I click card, I can select my reference date and the reference number. I can input the payment amount. So for example, maybe 500. And then I can click next. Now inside here, you can see the exchange rate. So convert to settle outstanding and convert for reporting. So I can see the convert to settle outstanding is one to one and convert to reporting based upon a reporting currency. I can see the exchange rate here and then I can update it because you have to update what the bank tells you the exchange rate is. You can't tell them that their rate is wrong and your rate is right. So you have to input it here and then click next. Make sure all the information looks good and you can click pay. And then I can click close. Next, let's go back to archive. Let's click on David Warehouses. And for whatever reason, let's go and delete the payment. Yes. Let's go back. And you can see that it now appears back in bills. Let's click pay. And from here, let's select our MasterCard. Let's select the payment type, card. And let's put in the reference number. We can also do a prepayment of 30 bucks and let's click next and let's pay. Now we just paid using our credit card. So now let's pay off that credit card. Let's go to accounting and let's click on journal entry. Let's click create and let's click on fund transfer. And here we can select the bank where we're paying the credit card from. So OCBC, I'm going to select the bank transfer and the reference number. I'm going to input them out. Now under two, I'm going to select my credit card. I'm going to input a memo, for example, memo. I can also attach a file that could be your receipt, for example, or your credit card statement. And then you can click save. And that was a quick look at how to create, receive goods, and make payments using buy transactions, expenses, and debit notes in Descara books.